Hello, this is Hans van der Kwast from IHC Delft Institute for Water Education. In a previous video I've showed how to delineate streams and a catchment. In this video I'm going to show you how to style those results. This is based on the book QGIS for Hydrological Applications by Kurt Menke and myself. You can find the steps in chapter 4 of the book. Let's start with styling the channels of the Ruhr catchment. Let's have a look first at the attribute table so we know better how to style it. We see there are two columns that are important, order and order cell. They refer to the Strahler order. The order cell are the values in the original Strahler order raster, similar as we created in some steps in the catchment delineation procedure. The same algorithm is part of the channels and uh, basins algorithm. However, that also converts it to this uh, vector layer and then the order column renumbers the original cell orders to new orders starting from 1. So if we sort, then we see that order of cell 8 becomes 1, 9, 2, etc. So we open the layer styling panel and make sure that the root channels is uh, active. You can also select it over here. And we change the renderer to graduated because we want to have a gradual scale applied to the column of order. You can also choose order cells, but here we will choose order. And because the orders are integer values, we change the precision to zero, so there will be no uh, decimals. We change the method to size, so we are not changing the color based on the attribute, but the size, so the thickness, and we change the size on a scale from 0 0.3 to 1 millimeter. We uh, keep the mode at equal interval, but we change it to the amount of classes that we have. Here I chose a cutoff of 8 and it's until 11, so that means that there are 4 classes. And there we see that it is applied. Now we can change the symbol and we set the color to RGB 15, 66 and 220 to get the right colors of blue. You click on this arrow to go back to the main screen of the settings and now we can adjust the legend because we have order 1, 2, 3, 4 and not ranges. So I can just simply double click on the legend column and edit the values. And now we are ready. We have styled our channels layer with the Strahler orders. Now we are going to style the flow direction raster layer. A flow direction layer indicates the direction of flow for each pixel to the steepest downward pixel. The direction of flow can be expressed by compass direction. However, it's not possible to store text in a raster. The compass direction can also be expressed by degrees on a circle, where north is 0 degrees, east is 45 degrees, etc. To store 360 degrees, which is the full circle, we would need more than 8 bits, because in 8 bits we can only store 2 to the power of 8 values, which means 0 to 255. To have more bits in a file, we need to increase the, the file size. However, in the algorithm to calculate the flow direction, we use the D8 method, which looks around the cell that we consider in eight discrete directions. Therefore, we only need to recode the directions into eight values, where each value represents a discrete direction from the center pixel of a 3x3 three three matrix. Each software, however, does it in a different way. The Saga algorithm that we use in QGIS from the processing toolbox uses 0 for north, 1 for northeast, etc. Which means that it stores values from 0 to 7 for all the compass directions. A value of 255 is used for surfaces that are flat and don't have any flow direction. We set the renderer to palleted unique values because it is a discrete raster although there is an order and we click classify. Since the value of 255 represents flat surfaces, we're going to remove this now for 
time being from the classification. So it's now 0 to 7. We're going to choose a spectral color ramp. But we're going to modify it. So I click right and I'm going to edit the color ramp. In this window we can edit the color stops for the ramp. The idea is that the far left and right sides will represent northern flows and we will set both of those stops to the same blue color to make it a circular ramp. We will then set the center stop to a bright yellow for southern flows. The stop in the middle on the right will be western flows and the stop in the middle to the left will be eastern flows. So we click the drop down menu for color 1 and we choose pick color from the context menu and we use that to select color 2 so it will be equal. Click the center stop that will represent the southern flows and assign it a bright yellow for the eastern stop we do green and for the western stop we use magenta now we're going to add the flat areas back again we click the plus sign and there we changed the value to 255 8 doesn't exist that's just a default value and we click on the color and we change it to white. We can just pick the standard white there. And with the arrow we go back to the main screen. Now you see that the label column is still not uh, very useful. That's exactly the thing that will appear in the legend. So we can just simply double click there and edit the values to the right compass directions. To get a better effect we are going to use a hill shade. So here is our DEM and I'm going to duplicate the DEM and I'm going to use that one as a hill shade and for that we can use the hill shade uh, renderer. I'm going to put it just below the flow direction map. I'll switch that one off and I'm going to use here the hill shade renderer. And you see by default the Sun is in the northwest, which in the re reality is never the case, but uh, that gives us the hill shading effect. And now I blend it, but when I zoom in I'll see a lot of these pixels. Um, it has to do with the resolution and I can blur it a little bit, but it's better to do that for um, the hill shade itself, because that is causing uh, the issues. So here I put uh, Hill shade to bilinear, and we see now a more smooth image appearing. And uh, yeah, that just looks better with the hill shades. We are now going to style the digital elevation model in a similar way. We already have the hill shade, we put the DEM on top. And here we can then choose single band pseudo color because it's a continuous raster with gradients. And we can choose another ramp. If we say create new color ramp, we can choose here CPT City and CPT City gives us access to a lot of presets and we choose here topography and elevation and now we see that this ramp is uh, assigned and if we put the blending mode to multiply then it will blend nicely with the hill shade that we have in the background. We can change the stretching of the colors also to the area that we are zoomed in to get more uh, contrast. So now we have more contrast in the high areas and if I zoom into the lower areas and I click updated canvas then I get more colors there. If I want again uh, the whole raster then I click whole raster and the colors will be stretched over the full range. The last layer that we are going to style in this video is the catchment boundary of the Ruhr catchment. So make sure it's selected and we change the renderer to inverted polygons which means we are going to style everything outside of the polygon and we can use that as a kind of a mask to make the area really come out. If I click on simple fill I can change the symbol layer type to the shape burst fill 
and the shape burst fill creates a kind of gradient between two colors so we keep the two color setting here and we're going to change the first color to 135, 135 and 135 for RGB which makes it a gray and the second color we keep that white We set the distance of the shape burst to 4 mm to make it a little bit smaller. And we change the underlay rendering, the opacity, to 65. Now we can see through the outside polygon, our DEM. I'm going to add another renderer, simple fill because I want the boundary to come out as a black line. So I choose here Simple Fill. And for the Symbol Layer Type I choose Outline Simple Line. Make the stroke width a bit bigger. And I change the color to completely black. So RGB should be 0, 0, 0. And that's the final result. Here we see our catchment map uh, with the inverted shapers polygons really coming out of the screen within the background uh, the digital elevation model. We could also do that uh, for, for example, the OpenStreetMap layer. We see the same effect because we have this inverted shape burst fill polygon of our catchment boundary.